A lot of th uh, people talk about, especially at this conference um, and at others that we've talked to about um, the acid alkaline balance. And I know that was something you were going to talk about. Um, people talk about getting the body more alkaline, but you want to touch on pH balance in a particular part of the body. Can you discuss that a little yes. bit? Yes. Uh, pH stands for potential hydrogen, and I don't want to bore our viewers with chemistry, but this is a very important point because you, in chemistry you can pour uh, substance A and B together and then an enzyme and you think, well, it should have a reaction, not unless the pH is right. And pH is on a logarithmic scale. Hang in there with me here. Those of you who know what the Richter scale is with earthquakes, it's on a logarithmic scale, so it's not uh, a 6 or a 7, it's a 10 to the 6th power or a 10 to the 7th power. So what you're talking about is when you go in an earthquake and it's a 6 versus a 7, it's not 16 percent higher or 1 sixth, it's 10 times higher or a thousand uh, percent. Now back to pH in the body, we're back to this logarithmic scale. So in the human body when they measure your arterial pH Healthy is about 7.42. Uh, if you're unhealthy, 7.35. Below that, you're dead. So there's a very narrow window in which the body can tolerate pH uh, changes. And there are mechanisms, elegant mechanisms in the body, buffering systems that try to introduce bicarbonate and try to maintain. So the, the typically, the body is tipping over in favor of being too uh, acidic and the body is trying to bring it back to being sufficiently alkaline. Seven is neutral, two is acidic, 14 is very basic. The body wants to be slightly alkaline in the blood, but, and this is where it gets interesting, the stomach has to be very acidic. And all digestive enzymes begin their activity based upon a pH of two. Now, remember our numbers. We said 7.4 is a healthy blood, but we said two is in the stomach. Now, if you take your 10 to the 7 or the 2, that's 10,000 times the body has to ratchet down and create an acid substance in what is otherwise an alkaline environment. It's extremely uh, intensive and, and uh, requires energy. What happens is as we mature or get sick or under stress, we don't make enough acid in the stomach. Then we don't activate the enzymes in the gut. Then we end up with malnutrition because we're not extracting from our foodstuffs what we need. Stomach problems, uh, the Pepsid people, the, uh, the people who are taking all the antacids. My friends who are in alternative care, alternative care find that if you add acid with a meal, you actually eliminate the problem. And I said, come on. I had some, um, uh, a little uh, acid indigestion myself. I add one or two tablespoons of lemon juice in a glass of water with my meal, the problem's gone. It was years I had indigestion. Uh, acid in the stomach helps to digest your food. It's also the moat surrounding the castle that protects us against infections, fungus, parasites, etc. So pH is a critical issue. And to try and make this summarize, eat more fruits and vegetables, eat more plant foods. I'm in favor of eating some animal foods, but you realize amino acids will generate more of an acidic level in the body. And so if you're, you know, a 12 ounce steak and four eggs for breakfast, which is sometimes the paleo approach, is stressing the liver and the kidneys and creating an imbalance in pH. So more plant food. Mm -hmm. well, when you talk about uh, more plant food and people think, okay, the green plants are, are acidic or, or uh, alkaline, I'm sorry, and some of the fruits would be acidic, like you mentioned with the lemons and, and other citrus fruits like that. So that's where I think a lot of people get confused when you have these foods on, on either end of the scale. True. And here's what happens. When you introduce uh, into the body, uh, for instance, I said take one or two tablespoons of lemon juice and a glass of water with a meal, that acid is going to help you digest your, your f meal and you won't have any a dyspepsia or upset stomach. But at the same time, when the body feels that acid in the stomach, what it's going to do is secrete a bicarbonate buffer into the bloodstream that makes your bloodstream more alkaline. So uh, the upshot is amino acids generate more of an acidic environment. So high protein will create more of an acid environment in the blood, which is not good. Cancer and fungus are acidic uh, substances. They generate lactic acid as their byproduct, and that acid compromises the immune system. It cannot work at an abnormal pH. 
Hi, and thanks for watching this video. If you like that video and you like our channel, the best thing you can do is support us with a Patreon donation. You can find the link here on the right. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Again, that link here on the right. While you're at it, be sure to check out some of our more recent videos as well. You can find those right below. Thanks again for watching.